Oh, I, I bet you that because I'm right here. Whoa. He might be uh, hitting some trees. Let me raise him up. It's mini killer time again. Why am I yelling? Now we've all heard of Holy Stone and we know what they're all about. And as a matter of fact, Holy Stone was the first company I bought a drone from on Amazon way back in 2018. Unfortunately, my experience with Holy Stone at that point wasn't all that great because I ended up crashing that little drone into a tree. I could not get that thing out to save my life. However, Holy Stone has come a long way since then. I mean, it's almost been eight years. Uh-uh. Six years. <laughs> this is the all new Holy Stone HS360E. I don't even think this drone's been released yet. How did I get one? <laughs> well, a Holy Stone representative contacted us and asked us if we'd be interested in trying one of these out. And I was like, any time that I can get an opportunity to test out a potential mini killer, I'm in. <laughs> okay, so what's this new drone all about? In all honesty, I have no idea. Since the drone hasn't been released yet, I have really limited information on it. And the only information that I have or that I could find is written on this box here. Now the representative did tell me that this is an upgraded version of the HS360S which is a drone that's been out for quite a while. There's several reviews on that. And what they told me is, is the improvement is mainly on the camera. Anyway, let's look at the box and see what's listed here as it specs. So first thing is, is it's listed as a 249 gram drone, ultra light and foldable. It has a 4K camera with EIS. I guess that's electronic image stabilization. <laughs> it's got GPS return and it's got some intelligent flight functions. It's pretty limited information, but it's something to start with. I've flown a few of these mini killers in the past that didn't have a gimbal. You guys have probably seen those videos. A lot of people didn't like them. <laughs> but I've also flown a couple of, of drones with like a two axis gimbal and EIS. I'm telling you what, the EIS can really make a big difference. With all this excitement building, I think it's time for me to take this drone inside, get everything charged up. I've got to download the Fly app. I'm not sure yet which Fly app it uses, but I'll let you know. And I've got to go inside and learn some stuff. Oh, before we go, I do want to thank JJ Drones for all of his support with these mini killer videos that we've been releasing lately. He calls it a mini killer series, and I think that's a great idea. So Jason, this video is dedicated to you and your channel, JJ Drones. All right, guys, well, I'm going to meet you at the graveyard for the test flight. It's raining. All right, guys, we've arrived at the graveyard. This is the place where the mini killers come to die or live. That's the R I was talking about last time we were here. I'm not sure what that's for. And I think the perfect place for the landing pad. Tag on it. All right, I think I'm gonna put the landing pad right there. Just in view of the graveyard. Well guys, you can probably tell it's a brand new day. I had to charge this battery. I'm just kidding, it didn't take that long. Actually, they say that this battery takes about three hours to charge and I think it took every minute of that. But you put it in this little battery charger and then whenever you plug it in, there's a light right here that turns green that starts to blink. And then when it's finally full, it turns solid. But anyway, let me get the battery put into the drone. Again, it's labels up and then you just push it in and it clicks in. I don't care what anybody says. That's a good looking drone. Well, getting the controller ready here, I've learned a couple of things about the setup process. They want you to go in a certain sequence. They want you to turn the controller on and then they want you to turn the drone on and then the fly app. It's called the HS fly app. So once you get all, once you get the controller and the drone on, that's when you actually plug in the drone or plug in the controller to your phone with this cable right here, and you can up or you can start up the uh, the fly app. Okay, let me push this over here to the side. I'm going to take the drone and controller over to the landing pad, and we're going to get this thing all booted up. Voila! <laughs> all right, so I want to turn the control. Actually, let me walk up to the camera and show you guys the screen here. If you push the button one time, it's going to show you the amount of battery that you have. Whoops, that you have left in the controller. Now this controller takes like 40 minutes to charge from zero to 100, which is pretty fast. And it'll last like two and a half hours. All right, let's get this thing booted up. I think what you do is you hit the button once and it wakes it up and then you hit the button again and it'll turn it on. And now what it wants me to do is it wants me to come over here to the drone and it wants me to pair it up. Now this can take up to 40 seconds. So this is where some patience comes in, which I don't have much patience. <laughs> so the way that you turn the drone on is you just simply hold this button down right here. That's on the back of the drone. I guess you may have to hit that button twice. Oh, you know what? I didn't seat the battery. Let me seat the battery, <laughs> make sure that everything's connected. And then you hold the button down and it'll power up and make that little jingle. And now the controller and the drone are trying to connect. So I'll just sit here and wait. Now that I got the controller on and the drone connected, they're all connected up. I can connect this cable into the phone 
and now I can turn this thing on. It's called the HS Fly app. Well, now that you guys can see the screen, I'm going to hit controls, and that should take us to the FPV feed, and we should get a feed pretty fast, and there it is right there. Look at, uh, look at the colors. They're actually pretty good. There, I just raised the gimbal up. One of the weird parts about this controller is, is the gimbal or the camera, I'm sorry, the camera controller is on your right finger, your right index finger, which is strange because we're used to having it over here on the left side. One of the things I've noticed about the interface here is how easy it is to read. Like everything's laid out really a lot like DJI. At the bottom it's got your distances and things, and the left it's got your, uh, what is that, the compass thing, and then you know you can go to your map. Let's go back to the compass. Before we actually start up and take a flight, I want to show you guys this. I want to show you what's on the camera. So you hit that camera above the, the shutter button. Look at all these different options. It's got video or photo and video. Then it's got time lapse, slow motion, and panorama. So if they've been able to address the camera shakiness with the EIS, I think that that stuff could be pretty neat. I don't know if we're going to get to test that today. We might not have enough battery power because we've only got, like I said, one battery. Anyway, we'll hit that and we'll do a launch. Let's take off and see how stable this thing is. That's kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a stability test, and then we're gonna do like a distance test. We're gonna go out 1,500 feet over to this pond. And we're gonna see if the signal stays strong. Well, as far as getting it started, there's two different ways. You can pinch the sticks down and in, or you can hit that launch button up there. So we're gonna hit the launch button up there, and then you slide to unlock the motors, and then you take off, and it's gonna raise up and hover just a few feet above the launch spot. Not a bad looking drone and it looks really stable. How about that? Don't get too close to the drone, Kevin. The blades stick out further than the drone. <laughs> That's a pretty cool looking drone, isn't it? Reminds me of something. All right, so I'm gonna test the optical flow sensor. So I'm gonna put my hand underneath. Hello, hello. Do you not have an optical flow sensor? It sure looks like an optical flow sensor. Let me push it and see if we'll come back to position. Yeah, he sinks back to position. Looks pretty stable. Let's see if he's gonna come. Yeah, he comes back to his position. How do you know where you're at if you don't have a optical flow sensor? That is really weird. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of strange. But now that he's pretty much settled, hey buddy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to the camera here and I'm gonna hit video and start a recording. So let's get him turned around and we're gonna go for our little, I guess, flight distance or 1500 foot distance test. Now, with him floating right there, the video feed looks really good from the phone here. Now again, I've got some sun that's kind of making the screen a little bit hard to see, but uh, now he's sinking just a hair. But the screen looks really good to me. It looks like it's, looks like it's smooth. I wonder if the EIS is really doing its job. I forgot to check the settings. <laughs> Let me go to the little wheel here up in the upper right hand corner. When you first turn the app on, it'll, it'll have you in beginner mode. So you got to make sure that you're not in beginner mode if you want to fly any, any distance further than 50 feet, I think it is. Let's just click over there and see. All right, 98 feet is what, what it's got you set at. And return to home altitude is set at 65 feet. So let's get out of beginner mode. We'll make sure that I'm going to put the return to home altitude up to 185. Might be a little bit high for this area, but you can never be too safe, right? And then you gotta hit save, and now it's set successfully. So over here with the three dots in the upper right-hand corner, that's where you can change everything from metric to, uh, to imperial. And I always like to have this bullseye, or the crosshairs in the middle of the screen, so I know kind of where, what he's looking at. But everything else is sort of, hey, there were some Chinese that came up. Everything else is sort of just informational. Now we can take off, and we can try your distance test. <laughs> Let's get him up in the air now that we know that our return to home flight is, or return to home altitude is good. Look at the screen. So far, it looks pretty smooth, doesn't it? I don't know. I mean, looks smooth to me. We're only up like 50, 60 feet here. But the control stick going up seems really solid. All right, so we're 110 feet up. Let me turn to the left here a little bit. The controls are a little bit laggy, I think. So I don't know if that's going to be good or not. Let's go up to 120 feet just to be safe. <laughs> Come on, go up. Okay, so now we're at 123 feet, 128 feet. Let's just, I'm gonna leave the, the camera as high as it goes because I know whenever he takes off, he's gonna be banking pretty hard. So let's just go straight forward and see how straight he flies. Yeah, that camera banked really, really hard. It looks good up in the sky though. I think we're in normal mode. We might need to test out the different modes. 
but we're going 17, 16 feet per second, which I don't know how that translates into miles per hour, so we'll have to look that up and post that here. But 16 miles an hour, it seems pretty slow. Maybe we're in camera mode or, or cine mode, whatever that's called. But it's flying straight and it's flying true. Man, it looks really good. This footage isn't bad. I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting it to be this good as far as the footage goes. So how far are we out? We're 590 feet out. We're almost halfway there, and we've still got a perfect signal. Now, again, I'm, I'm aimed straight towards the drone with the controller. If I were to turn around, I wonder if I'd lose the signal. Let me try that. Let me turn around here and watch the signal. So we're 800 feet out. I'm turned, I'm turned 180 degrees away from the drone. We still have a perfect signal. Oh, it looks like the feed may have froze. Yeah, the feed froze, though, didn't it? But we're at 1,000 feet out, and now that I'm facing the, the drone, the feed's back and it looks really good. We raised up to 132 feet. I wonder why we did that. All right, so we're 100 and, or 1100 and almost 1200 feet out. We still have a perfect signal. I gotta tell you, the signal strength here is really good. And the feed's not bad. I mean, the feed looks like it's, uh, looks like it's keeping up. Doesn't look to me like we're 130 feet up though. I don't know, that looks kind of, looks kind of low for 130 feet. All right, well, we made it out to 100 or 1,500 feet, and as soon as I let go of that stick, man, he almost shot straight up into the sky. Well, now we're going to do our return to home test, and all you got to do is you got to hit this return to home icon here and then slide it to the right. I wonder if he's going to turn around to us or if he's going to come home backwards. <laughs> all right, he's raising up to his return to home height. That's good. 180 feet? I didn't think I had it that high, did I? He's up at 200 feet, and now he's sinking. All right, now he's coming down to the return to home height, I guess. He's coming home a lot faster than he went out there. So he's coming back at 22 feet per second. That seems a little bit faster. So we may be in like a cine mode, but he's coming straight back. I can see him from here. It looks really good. Well, from what I can see. <laughs> and he's keeping a straight line. He's, he's coming straight down the road. But look at the feed. The, the video quality looks pretty good. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I'm not... Being a, maybe I'm not able to see it like you guys are seeing it right now, but honestly, the, the video feed right here looks pretty good. The colors might be a little bit off. It may be a little bit, uh, I might need to, I don't know. I don't know anything about the camera stuff. <laughs> if you guys have any clues or hints, let me know. He's looking pretty good here. Right, He's coming right above us now. He's 180 feet. I'm sorry, he's 400 feet away, but he is right there. Sounds good. He doesn't sound like he's struggling. Of course, there's no wind today. But I'm gonna pull the gimbal down and see where he is whenever he gets right above us. He's, 100, he's about 100 feet away. And he's, he's kind of moving quite a bit in the, in the uh, well, there's no wind, but he's kind of moving a lot. When he stopped, he really Return moved up and that uh, crosshair does not look like it's centered on the, um, is he having a problem with the transmission here? That gimbal doesn't look like it's straight down because he's right above us. I don't think he's that far off. All right, man, well, how close are you? He comes down really slow. I've noticed that. So he's coming down at four feet per second. I guess that's, that's kind of fast, I don't know. All right, let's go to the GoPro and watch him land because I don't think he's gonna be on that pad. <laughs> All right, man, come on. He looks like he's right on the pad from here, but I can't say with any certainty because my depth perception might be off. <laughs> All right, looks like he's really close. He's only a couple of feet away. He bounced. <laughs> yeah, he hit pretty hard. I think that he needs an optical flow sensor. I'd say I'm impressed with that. Not bad, Holy Stone. All right, let's get the gimbal back up here. And we're gonna put him back on the pad. We're gonna try something else. We're still recording, that's good. <laughs> I'm gonna try the second way to launch him. I'm just gonna pull the sticks together. I'm just gonna raise him up in the air. And he worked. Yeah, you don't have to use that button, I guess. You can manually launch him that way, just like uh, any other drone. So it looks like the battery has come down a one notch and the controller battery has come down a notch too. So the controller is supposed to last a lot longer than the drone battery. I, I don't understand why it's kind of tied. Maybe the drone battery will last two and a half hours like the controller. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> All right, let's get him turned around here. Oh, you know what? I think that the... Uh, Oh, <laughs> oh, man, wrong button. I hit the wrong button and he tried to kill me. 
<laughs> getting back, I gotta watch him make sure he's not creeping up on me. But getting back to this, I think that what we can do is we can go to sport mode. So you go to the speed button right here and you hit this <laughs> fly, you hit the speed button and now we're in sport mode. So maybe we were in normal mode. Let me hit it again. Yeah, now we're in camera mode. Now we're in normal mode. Yeah, when it came on, I think it did say normal mode, didn't it? Let's go to sport mode. I guess we'll fly low and fast here and see how, uh, how it handles it. Let me turn to the left here. This probably isn't going to be very good footage. <laughs> all right, let's do this. I got the gimbal all the way up. I'm just going to go straight forward. There's a fly that's bothering me like crazy. All right, so we're going 11, 16, 18 feet per second, 24 feet per second. He's raising up. Wow. Yeah, he's not uh, really easy to control, honestly. <laughs> so we're at 21 feet per second. And now he, now he straightened out quite a, quite a little. He straightened out a lot, but his now his height's going down for some reason. I don't want to crash him. So he's only 10 feet up now. Well, now he's going to land. That's kind of strange. Get back up in the air, buddy. You don't want to land. Turn back around and come back to me. <laughs> I wonder if we can do that on the way back. Okay, so we're going to raise up just a little bit more. And we're going to... I Seriously, the footage, I think, is not bad. It's definitely not uh, gimbal footage, but it's not nearly as shaky as I thought it was going to be. Come on, come straight forward. Come back to me and settle down. I'm, I don't want to go as fast as I can go because I'm not a very good pilot. <laughs> Everybody knows that I don't have very good control of these of these sticks. All right, come on, veer to the left just a hair. I'm trying to control you to the left. There you go. I want to go over top of me, but I don't want to run into that tree that's right there. Come on, other way. <laughs> come on, there you go. He's going right over top of us. There's a tree that he's almost gonna hit, but he didn't. It's not bad at all, guys. All right, let's get him back over here. Now, the last thing I want to try here is just a real quick active track test. You guys can see him up in the sky there. From here, he looks really strong, like from this distance. I, I don't know if the distance is masking his subtle movements on the screen. I mean, you can tell that he's moving a little bit, but from the GoPro, you can't really tell. It looks like he's just sitting there steady. All right, let's get this active track test started. I'm gonna do the GPS follow, but I gotta really keep my eyes on him because make sure this phone's GPS signal is strong. Use this feature in an open area without obstacles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just going to walk backwards nice and slow here. So does he have me in, in his sights? Yes, he does. He's following me now. Can I turn him to the left? I can't control him. I have no control. I wonder if I just canceled the, uh, the feature. No, he's still following me. There's a tree right there to the right-hand side I do not want him to run into. Let me hit record here. How's that look, guys? He's following me now. I don't think he's doing too bad of a job either. Well, he's following the controller anyway, or the phone maybe, because he's following the GPS signal, not actually me. I kind of want to kill the battery and see what it does on an automatic return to home. So let's do that. We have, him, we have his uh, landing pad where he took off from. So let's send him up in the air and let him go until the battery, I guess, goes into, what is that called, the low battery mode. So let's get him up in the air. Oh, <laughs> I guess he's low battery now. I'm gonna just hit confirm and see what happens here. All right, so I hit confirm and now he's raising up to the uh, 100 and something foot mark. I gotta go over here and get the GoPro. Oh, he's only 50 feet high. Maybe if you're so close to the takeoff point, it doesn't go up to 100 and something feet that you've got uh, set. He just goes up to 50 feet. Then he gets himself uh, situated and comes down for a landing. Are you gonna land? It's almost like he's stuck up in there in the sky. Hello? Are you going to come down? It says he's 3.3 feet away, but he's just sitting there hovering 40 feet up in the air. He's not 40 feet up in the air, though, I can tell you that. I'm going to go ahead and just drop him and land him myself. See where he's at directly, because he's not coming down on his own. You're a little bit further away than you were the last time, buddy. <laughs> not even really close. Well... You're close enough. Well, now that we've exhausted him and we've exhausted me, I'm gonna get him back in the truck so we can have our conclusion. Well, guys, I've been waiting on this screen recording to pop up on my phone for several minutes here. I'm kind of getting nervous that it's not gonna show up. But let's go ahead and close this out. Do I like this drone? Yes. Do I think it's a mini killer? Probably not. <laughs> what can they work on? 
I think obviously they need to put a real sensor in here. I mean, does that not look like it's some sort of optical flow sensor right there in the middle? Well, it ain't. Well, when I was flying the drone, the stick seemed a little bit stiff and it seemed a little bit slow to respond, but that may just be something that you need to get used to. So let's talk about the positives. I think the signal strength was fantastic. The transmission feed was great. Yes, the screen recording is here. Holy Stone, I want to thank you for reaching out and letting us test out your newest drone. Guys, if you want to find out more information about this, hopefully by the time this video is uploaded, they'll have some information available. So you can click on the link that's in the description and we may even have a discount code. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Holy Stone's really done a pretty good job with this drone. One more thing that they need to do, I think that the EIS is working fantastic, but they need to really implement a gimbal on this drone. I think that would just put it over the top. Then it can be deemed a mini killer, possibly. <laughs> But again, I want to thank JJ Drones for the recommendation of the Mini Killer series. If you guys want to see more of these Mini Killer series videos, I've put together a playlist. So it's, it's right here. So just click on that. I hope that you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. God bless.